Hello friends! Today I wanted to share with you my crochet journals. I'm very excited to do this video. I've been working on these journals for almost a year and um, I'm happy to show them off. I am somebody who loves journaling and writing. I am gifted journals all the time and I have a journal for pretty much every hobby that I'm very passionate about. So it was only natural that once I started to realize that crocheting was a hobby that I was definitely going to stick with. I wanted to start a journal to help me keep everything organized. A lot of times I'll crochet things and give them away as gifts and even though I take a picture of them before I give them away, I want like a little scrapbook or memento of all of the work that I put into such a delightful hobby of mine. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to start a crochet journal is to just have a compendium of the projects I've done. The other reason I wanted to start it is because it's very easy to quickly accumulate a lot of yarn as a needle artist. I now have a good bit of yarn and I'm definitely like, I don't need to buy any new yarn. I need to use the yarn I already have. That being said, it's it can be a little bit challenging to remember what hook you need for each type of yarn, um, how much it comes with, what the name of it is, the brand, if you want to buy more of it, if you run out. So I wanted somewhere to keep track of all the yarn that I've purchased. So those are the big reasons why, aside from just loving putting together journals and notebooks, why I wanted to start a crochet journal. So I have two of them um, and they are both Rifle Paper Company notebooks. These were gifts to me. As I said, I get a lot of notebooks gifted to me, so I don't usually have to buy them and I just try to use whatever notebooks I have. Um, I was gifted these a couple years ago and then even so, um, this Christmas I got more Rifle Paper Co. notebooks gifted to me. This one I just think is absolutely beautiful. And then this pack of more floral notebooks. Um, this three pack is $18 and um, these two came in a pack together, I believe. As you'll see, they are kind of um, short, but wide, um, the perfect size. And um, I ended up designating crochet journal number one and number two, and they serve different functions. So I'll get into the first one first. Crochet journal number one is primarily for the projects that I've crocheted. And when I was setting this up, I wanted to make it look pretty because I love decorating notebooks, but I also knew that if it was too pretty and too much effort to keep it up, then it would just become um, cumbersome and overwhelming to keep up with it, and then I would be less likely to actually use it, which is what I ultimately want to do. I want to use these. So on the first page, I just used washi tape and a colored pen to give it a little title page. On the next page, I wanted to have a place to list out my ideas and inspiration. So actually, the next two spreads um, are for ideas and inspiration. I have it so far as a list, but I figured if I saw any pictures online, I could paste them in here, but I'm kind of more of a list person. Um, so these are just for things that I see on Instagram that I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'll come back to that so I don't forget about it. And I just check them off as I do them. And then again on this page, I just used washi tape along the top and the bottom to frame it, but you know, not to have to put too much effort into it. Then I made another title page for projects. Now, before I started this journal, I had been crocheting for about six months, so I had a bunch of little things that I had crocheted that I didn't necessarily want to include with its own designated page in here, but I ended up just making a list of those little beginner projects and then inserting some of those pictures. So I made some flowers, I did a hat, I did a wall hanging for my mom, and um, I just wanted like a quick catch-up page for those projects. And then this is the main part of this journal. So this is kind of the layout for the rest of the pages. Each project gets its own page. If it's a bigger project, like my sweater vest, it gets two pages. But I just used a thin washi tape to section off different parts of the page for different um, bits of information I wanted to record. So the first thing is mug, rugs, and placemats. And in this top left corner, I included the source of where I got the pattern, 
or the idea or inspiration for the project because I think it's important to give credit wherever I can, not only for the creator of the pattern, but also for my own reference. Like if I ever want to go back and recreate it, then I have a starting place and I can remember who came up with that because I tend to just randomly come across these patterns. Um, I usually just search in a search bar. I don't really have like any crocheters yet that I'm a dedicated follower of. And then in the top right corner, I included the dates that I worked on the project. Some of them are very specific. Some of them are more vague because I don't remember. And then this section here is for notes. Some of the projects I include detailed notes about how I crocheted it. And then other ones, I just write about the experience and things I learned. If I think that this is something that I am going to do again and just it's easy enough to where I can just do the pattern from my notes. I will include the pattern in my notes but if it's really complicated and I'm going to need to refer to the video to remake something like it then I just write about it. Um, and then at the bottom I include some pictures of the project um, and then if I made it for anybody I'll write who it was for at the top of the pictures. So then on this page, I have my jar covers and spoiler alert, there will be many pages with jar covers because I save so many containers, spaghetti jars, pickle jars, ice cream containers, and then I don't know what to do with them. So I crochet jar covers for them. <laughs> This is a granny square pouch that I was just playing around with. I saw the idea online and wanted to try it. I'm not I'm not very happy with how it turned out, but it was just kind of like a playing around, trying it out type of thing. And then, as I said, another jar cover on this page. This jar cover is so cute. It's like from a little vegan pesto container. The next page is my baby blanket, which I have a video about. Uh, maybe you've seen it. Uh, maybe that's how you found me, but I did a baby blanket for my cousin's baby, so I guess that's my second cousin. On the side here, I have a ripple stitch, but in hindsight, I looked into it and I don't believe that it is the ripple stitch that I used for this blanket, so just disregard that. And then some cute little flower coasters. On the next page, I have a scarf that I crocheted for my mother for Christmas, and then these adorable little pumpkins that I crocheted in September. They were actually very easy, and my first time ever making a 3D poly-filled crochet project. Then I have my pumpkin coaster, and the picture I put off to the side because I anticipated making more pumpkin coasters, and I didn't, so um, that's just kind of a blank space, but I figure if I ever make more, then I'll just add the secondary date up here and then add the other picture because it's no big deal. Something to know about this is that I said see appendix for more detail. The appendix is just the end of this notebook with some papers and notes that I uh, wrote out for different projects. I crocheted those pumpkins during a camping trip so I actually copied the video instructions very detailed onto a piece of notebook paper so I could do it on my own without Wi-Fi or internet connection. Um, so that was handy to already have that written up. And then another jar cover. This one's for a plant, a pothos that I am propagating. On this page, I have a purse. This was another trial. I crocheted a couple granny squares, sewed them together. Again, I don't like how this turned out necessarily, but I was just playing around. On this page, I have more jar covers. I did a jar with a jar cover on it for each of my coworkers in my department. And then I also did one for my to-be sister-in-law. Um, I did not take a picture of it, but I requested that my brother or his fiance send me a picture of it, at which point I will add it in here in this space. Then I have some toast and egg coasters I made for my brother. And over here, some head warmers. Again, I have a third one I made, but I'll need to just like to actually take a picture of it and add it. Um, on this page, I started an entry for my blanket, which I started in November. I'm still working on it. I'm not even halfway done with it, so it's definitely like a project that I'm in the long haul for, but I wanted to put it in here um, so that chronologically it is where the start date was in my roster of projects. So I will be happy to go back and add that in once I'm done with that blanket. And then I have my Iron Man that I'm so proud of. I also have a video about this Iron Man project I crocheted, so you can check that out. 
It was for my dad and I gave it to him for Christmas. This is the last page in this journal that I have filled out and this is for my sweater vest. This is what I was talking about where I decided to do um, a two page spread for this project because I wanted to add all my notes about how I made it work and where I got where I referenced different um, techniques that I used and include lots of pictures because you know, you work so hard on it, you want to show it off. <laughs> That's all I have in this um, journal so far, and then I have all of these extra pages to add to as I do more projects. I'm really proud of this one. I just think it's so much fun to like flip through all the different things that I've worked on and just see my progress and the new techniques that I've learned. So it's very a very gratifying um experience looking through that. Now let's get into crochet journal number two because journal number one is kind of like where the action is, you know, you see these projects actualized, but journal number two isn't to be ignored. This is not chopped liver. It's got some good, good info in it too. So I did another um, title page in this one and I have some important information that I can reference um, if I need to. So on this page, I printed this out. It's crochet symbols and directions chart. I'm going to be honest. I don't know how to read these symbols yet. I'm still barely a beginner in terms of crochet, but I wanted somewhere where I could look or refer to if I needed to, like if I'm camping and I don't have internet, um, as well as some of the um, abbreviations for the different terms. And then over here, I also printed out a guide to apparel or textile textile care symbols. So these are the symbols you see on the yarn label um, and this will help me to decipher how to like take care of projects. On this page I copied down the standard yarn weight system including the number, the category name, the type of yarns, and then the hook sizes. I don't use this page a lot but I just think it's like good beginner inf information to note so um, I wanted to include that at the beginning. On this page, I have types of yarn. Uh, this was something that was interesting to me when I was kind of starting to get into crocheting. Um, like, what's the difference between acrylic and cotton? Like, what uses would you use the different yarns for? So I watched a few videos, and this is kind of like where my research led to. I have it in two categories, natural yarns and synthetic yarns, and then I break up natural yarns into animal-based and plant-based. And then I have the different types and like some just general notes about what it what the properties are like cotton's very durable or um, mohair is very fine on this page I have a stitch list and so I have a column for the name of the stitch a column for to check if I've tried it and if I've mastered it if I've tried it it's on the list and I check mastered if I'm able to do that stitch without checking anything and if I know like just like the general ways of navigating that stitch. This page is for tracking the purchases I've made in relation to my crocheting hobby. I'm surprised that there's not more on this, but like I said, my fiance took me uh, on a shopping spree for yarn for my birthday last fall. And so if I don't personally pay for it, I don't count it here. So this looks like I've been doing really good. You know, I've only gone to the store four times in the last six or seven months. I have a space for notes. I actually don't use this page a lot, but um, it's nice to know that it's here if I need to write something down. There's just kind of like a general section to add stuff like that. And then now we're getting into the yarn dictionary, I guess I'll call it, section of this notebook, which is what I primarily use this journal for. So the beginning stuff is just information to reference, but the bulk of this is keeping track of the different yarns I've purchased. Now, here is my method. I divide this into yarn brands. So the title page includes the general um, label of said yarn type. Um, so for example, my first one is I love this yarn brand. And again, I just wanted this to be simple. So I didn't do a lot of decoration, but I still wanted it to be cute. So I tried to tie in some washi tape wherever I could. That wasn't going to make it look too crowded or busy. All right. So then this is generally how I have each page set up. I have the name of the yarn color at the top and then I cut out the information about the yarn that's on the label. 
So it has the um, color and name as well as the lot number. Now the lot number will change even among the same color and brand of yarn, but I don't know. I just cut it out and added it. <laughs> and then I also cut out the other section of properties, including what hook size to use, the yardage or length of the skein, the, um, the fiber type or like the fiber makeup, and then the care instructions. So this was really important for me to, to save. I also include a little sample of the yarn that I tape in there because, you know, sometimes you have a label but you don't remember which yarn it went to. So usually when I open a new skein, I save the label and then I'll add it to this, but I don't add the label to this until I've actually used that yarn and have gained some familiarity with it and then I'll add it in here. Um, so here I have dark denim, natural striped. These are the yarns I'm using for my blanket currently. On the next page, I have the spring green and mid green yarns that I used. These I used for my sweater vest. Sometimes I write notes at the bottom, like used for sweater vest, and I think I'm gonna add that to this page, but other times I just have the yarn because it's pretty self-explanatory. And this one's variegated, so I include two samples so that I could you know, get a better sense of what um, the variegation looks like. All right, now this is a I Love This Yarn sport weight version, and I only have one for this section, and it's brown. I also love comparing the different like label looks. This section is I Love This Cotton, and some of them I've given tabs to. I think I'm gonna go back and tab every section so that it's easier to find. I've got French Lilac, Woods, yeah, you can see down here I included what I used it for. Um, I taped the yarn in the middle and at the top so that it doesn't fray too much. Antique gold and gold. Taupe and ivory. Brown and deep teal. And olive. The next section is starting to get into the Yarn Bee brand. Um, this first section is for the chunky yarn, for which I only have olive. I do have another chunky brand yarn for this, but I just haven't used it yet. But when I do, I will add it. And then Yarn B Soft and Sleek, just like the regular version, not the chunky version. And I have Kale, Kale Yellow, uh, which I used for the baby blanket. Pumpkin Spice, which I used for the pumpkins I made. And Red. And then this one I bought as a mini maker, so I just included the little label because um, I also like knowing how much the skein costs because I think that's interesting to compare. Oops, sorry, I just got a text. Ignore that. That is the end of that section and actually the end of the notebook. Um, so the method to me filling this in is just really random. I'm honestly just finding an empty section, sticking the introductory label there, and hoping that there will be enough room to insert all of the like branded yarn. I'm definitely going to fill this up really soon because I, like I said, I have more yarn that I haven't used yet that I will be adding to this, um, but I'll just figure that out when we get there. You know, it's not a big deal. It's only for me. As long as I know how to navigate it, that's really all that matters. I also will mention I have a yarn stash notebook and this is one that I bought that has the categories pre-written um, and it's just like a form you fill out. This I started to use and I do like it and I think it's handy but there were some categories that it included that I either just like didn't need to know or that I was confused about what the prompt meant necessarily. Like I struggled to understand what to write for the fiber content line. Um, and then the washing instructions. I mean, it's just so tedious to write out all those symbols and the different washing techniques and stuff. I did start using this and I do like it. And I think it's like a cute little handy notebook. But another downside to this is that you can't really include samples of each yarn to know what it actually looks like and that's something that I kind of want in a yarn stash journal. So those are my two notebooks, my two journals. I think I've personally struck a balance that I really like that's easy enough for me but still something that I'm happy to show off to other people. Let me know what you think. Uh, 
Do you keep a crochet journal? What do you think of mine? What would you like in a crochet journal? Um, have you tried it and it just didn't work out for you? I mean, that happens too. Keeping notebooks isn't for everyone, and that's fine if that's that's the case for you, but um, I'm obsessed with journaling, so <laughs> I'm gonna journal no matter what. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. See ya!